This is my grandpa's talk show. Hello and welcome to Nature Talk News, brought to you by James from the sunshine state of Southwest Florida. Where there's nature, there's news. Hello and welcome to our show today. And our episode this week would be with Heather Leffel from Toledo, Ohio. And Heather has MS, multiple sclerosis. And she is going to be on the show today to explain to you what it is and symptoms of MS. So we'll let her take it from here, and I hope you enjoy the show. Heather? Well, my name is Heather. Um, I have multiple sclerosis. Uh, My twin sister, Holly, also has multiple sclerosis. My mother has multiple sclerosis. What multiple sclerosis is, is a neurological disease that attacks the central nervous system. What it does is it eats away at the myelin sheath that covers your nerves. So what that does, which is actually, it stops the nerves from being able to um, send signals back and forth to each other. So basically what the nerves do is they send signals. So in your brain, it sends a signal back and forth. So when you want to send, like when you want to move your left foot, we'll say, you just move your left foot. And in your brain, it sends signals through that sheath to the nerves, and it does that for you. Well, when you have multiple sclerosis, that sheath is gone, which messes up the signal inside. So you can no longer do those kind of things. And that is what multiple sclerosis does. It eats away at that sheath, that coating on the nerves. Multiple sclerosis actually means multiple scars. That sclerosis actually is another word for scars. Scars on our brain. When they test for multiple sclerosis, they actually will give us MRIs, and they look to see if we have those scars on our brain. They'll also check to see if we have those on our spinal cord to see uh, if we have that, and they'll do spinal tap to check to see if we have that. There's multiple symptoms. There's over 90 different symptoms of MS. Some of them are vision. We'll get different vision issues, some of them being, like myself, I got when I, before I was diagnosed, I actually was at my son's t-ball game. Uh, He was little, and I looked up in the sky, and suddenly there was a lace coating over my left eye. I didn't know what it was, but since my mother has multiple sclerosis, that was her first symptom. So I freaked out. I was 19 years old, and I knew in my heart that I had MS. Being a dumb teenager, I ignored it for years because I knew in my heart that I had MS. That was my first symptom with the vision. Each time that I would get stressed out or have um, any kind of major issues in my life, that would be what would happen is I would get that lace covering in my eye and then through a couple weeks' time, the lace would go away, but a little bit of the lace would stay. To this day, I have a little bit of that lace still in my left eye. I have a little bit of that um, still there. Some people get blurred vision. I also get that when I'm tired. Um, a lot of times what that is is that we are the muscles in our eyes are weakened from the MS. So we have a hard time with that. We get double vision a lot of times. There's optic neuritis, which is part of MS. That's a lot of people's first symptom of MS is optic neuritis, and that is painful. It's a painful issue. It can cause blindness. Usually, the vision will come back. That is one of the first symptoms that most people with MS will get is that that type of problem. Another issue that we get is nerve pain. The pain that we get is equivalent to a toothache. A lot of people out there have had a toothache. What a toothache is is an exposed nerve. What we have is exposed nerve, again, going back to that that sheath being eaten away by our um, immune system by the MS because basically our immune system is attacking us. That is what's eating away at the myelin sheath is our own immune system is eating that myelin sheath and exposing the nerve. When there's an exposed nerve, like a toothache, like when you have a toothache, that's the exposed nerve, 
when we have those pains, our nerve pain, it's equivalent to that, but it's all over our body. It hurts. It's very painful. We take medication for it. There's one that I take called gabapentin. It's one that I will not go without because it, when I go without it, it literally feels like I am walking on coal, on hot coals, I'm sorry. If you can imagine the pain that you get when you, when you put, uh, if you touch a, a pot when you're, when you're cooking and that afterburn that you get, that feeling that you have on your hands when you burn yourself, that's the kind of pain that we get in our hands and our feet from the nerve damage. And it's because of the MS. It's because of the exposed nerves that we have. Um, we have all kinds of nerve pain. Um, tingling, we get numbness, we get um, the pins and needles, um, the, uh, when, when people will get the, their limbs will fall asleep on them, um, when normal people without the disease, you guys will sit in this certain situation and you'll be like, oh, my foot fell asleep. Well, we'll get that without fall, without sitting in a certain situation. Just a part of our body will fall asleep. That's nerve damage for us. It's because of the MS attacking part of our nerves, and there's nothing we can do about it. We take the medication, but there's always breakthrough pain. There's nothing we can do. It's part of the symptoms. It's one of the things that we have to deal with. There's nothing that we can do about it. It's one of the symptoms that we have to that we just have to deal with. There's another one that we have to deal with that's called the MS hug. A lot of people that get this one. It feels like a heart attack. It actually feels like you have a belt that, if you imagine putting a belt around your chest and tightening it up to the point where you can't breathe, just tightening it up to the very tightest level to where you actually can't even breathe in at all, that's what it feels like. And that's called the MS hug. That's actually the, um, the nickname for it is the MS hug. Some of us have that, and it doesn't go away for months at a time. Um, there's nothing we can do. I've been blessed to not have that, but I have many, many friends that have it. A lot of people that when they first get it, it is so scary and feels so awful that they end up going to the hospital in an ambulance because it literally feels like a heart attack. The pressure on your chest and the feeling that you get, it literally mimics a heart attack. Again, there's so many different symptoms to MS that it's, it's, it messes with your mind. There is, it actually causes depression and anxiety. Um, there's something called the pseudobolar effect from MS. You may have actually seen commercials on TV with, um, I don't know, I don't remember his name, but it actually causes us to not be able to control our episodes of laughing or crying. We may have a situation where we're sad, but we're laughing. So we're sad inside, but we're laughing uncontrollably. It's because of our the MS attacking our brain. It's actually uncontrollable. Um, people that have brain injury, brain trauma, they, they get this also, but it's well known in multiple sclerosis because the lesions in our brain, it's, the reason we get the symptoms that we get are because of where the lesions that we have are attacking the brain. Each symptom that we have is because of a, a location of a lesion in our brain. The pseudobolar effects that we get is because of a lesion in the part of the brain that causes that, that causes us to not be able to control the emotion. So that makes it so that you will laugh at a time when, you're, when you want to cry or cry at a time when you want to laugh. And there's nothing that you can do about it. It's, it's part of the MS. And it's, it's, uh, um, there's medications out for it now. I've actually been diagnosed with this just recently. I have not gotten on the medication for it yet, um, but I am in the process of getting on the medication for it. I don't have the laughter, but I have the point where I have uncontrollable episodes of crying where I'll just start crying and I don't know why I'm crying. And it's because of the pseudobulbar effect. I don't know why I cry. I just burst out crying and there's nothing I can do about it. Another effect of MS is memory issues. Our short-term memory is absolutely gone. This is one of the things that made me have to stop working because I was a sales rep, and I would sell something to a customer and then turn around and try to sell them the same product again because I had no memory of it at all. I would drive to work every day. I drove to work every I worked at the same place, took the same road to the same job every single day. Now, imagine this. I was driving home one day. 
and all of a sudden, I had no idea where I was. Complete amnesia, completely. I had to pull over into a parking spot and sit there for five minutes and try to figure out where I was. I had no idea where I was. Then all of a sudden, it just came back to me that I was on a road that I drive every single day. And I drove home bawling my eyes out. And actually, a week later is when I made the appointment to get the MRI to actually confirm that I had MS. Because I knew at that point, again, because of my family history, I knew at that point for sure that I had MS. But that was the short-term memory. It takes it away. And that's, again, because of the lesion placement, where your lesions are. We forget when we're cooking. We'll start cooking and, and go, um, go to the restroom and then go start watching TV and forget that we're cooking. We'll make something that we make all the time for our family and forget the recipe. We forget everything that, you know, the littlest things. And, and it hurts us. We, we forget years. This, one of the things that hurts me very much, and I may cry when I say this, is that um, I have a 12 year old son and I barely remember any of his childhood um, from the time that he was three or four to the, to the time that he was about 10. I can't remember any of it. It's because of the MS. I, I can't remember. He asked me about stories from that time, and, and I don't remember. <clears throat> and it's because of the MS. We'll be back after this commercial. For more information about Nature Talk News, you can email us at naturetalkatoutlook.com or you can visit our website at naturetalknews.com and there you can send us a message or you can send us a voice message. Also, you can listen to each one of our episodes straight from this page. Share this with a friend and let us know what you think of our Nature Talk News show. But that's, um, it affects the memory. It, it's a huge, the memory is a huge, huge issue. Um, a huge issue that it's almost like, um, it's almost like an, an Alzheimer's kind of thing for us because it's very hurtful when, when somebody's telling you something and, and they're like, well, we just told you it, and it's hard for our families to understand because, they don't understand that when they have to tell us the same thing over and over again, and it's frustrating for them because sometimes they think that we don't, that we're making it up, but we're not. We actually don't remember, you know, whatever situation that they're trying to tell us, and it's hurtful sometimes when they think that we're that we're making it up. Um, but it's it's just another it's another you know another hurtful part of MS. One of the other ones because of it being summertime is. Uh, Heat. Heat and MS is very bad combination. We cannot handle the heat. We actually, there's actually a lesion on our hypothalamus, um, which is a part of the brain that controls your, your internal thermometer, your internal body, you know, body heat. Um, when we are in the heat, it exacerbates all of our symptoms. It makes us dizzy, our vision goes blurry, um, we can pass out, we can get heat stroke. And the thing about it is that we can be in a room where every other person in that room is comfortable and we can be sweating and feeling like we're about to pass out and everyone else is comfortable. But it's because of the way that the MS affects us. We can't handle the heat. Actually, before they had all the testing that they have for MS, the way that they tested for MS back in the old days was the hot tub testing. What they would do is they would put a person with um, that suspected MS into a hot bathtub, and if their symptoms that they had, had, had been having became worse, then that person was diagnosed with MS. That's how bad the heat is for us, is that was actually how they used to diagnose with putting them in a hot bathtub. So heat is horrible for us. We wear cooling vests. We wear, um, you know, ice, um, ice, those ice towels around us. It's, uh, it's very important that people with MS stay cool because we can heat stroke, we can relapse, we can have very bad problems from, from the heat. And now let me explain when I say relapse what that means. Relapsing is when 
85% of people with multiple sclerosis have what's called relapsing, remitting MS. A relapse is when you have worsening of your existing symptoms or new symptoms for 24 hours or more. That is a relapse. Then you go into a remission. Now, those relapses can last for days, weeks, or months at a time. Then you go into a remission period. During the remission period, your symptoms will either go away completely or go away partially. And that remission period can last for days, weeks, months at a time. And then you go back into a relapse. Relapses can be caused by stress. They can be caused by heat. They can just be caused by anything at all, just because, just because MS feels like coming back up again. But that's relapsing, remitting MS. 85% of people have that form of MS. So that's what I mean when I say that heat can cause a relapse for those people. Um, it makes MS worse for them. There are four types of MS. The other types of MS um, is secondary progressive. After relapsing remitting, when somebody has relapsing remitting, <clears throat> eight, um, 80 to 90% of people with relapsing remitting will go into secondary progressive. Secondary progressive is when you are still having those relapses, but you no longer have the periods of remission. So you're relapsing, but you are no longer having those periods of, of clear-cut remission. So you are still having that, that hard, you know, those new and worsening symptoms, but no times of it getting better. And then you'll have another relapse where new worsening symptoms. So your disease is progressing at that point without any periods of remission. 80 to 90 percent of people with relapsing remitting will go into secondary progressive um, within 25 years of being diagnosed. Um, 50 percent of people will go into secondary progressive within 10 years of being diagnosed. Then there is primary progressive. Primary progressive is when you're diagnosed with from the very beginning. That means that you don't have relapses, you don't have remissions, you just have a steady decline of neurological function from the very day that you're diagnosed. So you are having issues with every, you know, uh, disability from day one. No relapses, no um, other, you know, none of that remission, anything like that from the very day that you're diagnosed. Then there's a very other, very, very rare form that only 5% of people with MS that are diagnosed have, which is called relapsing progressing MS. This one is where you have relapses, but then you're progressive from the day that you're diagnosed. So it's very similar to secondary progressive, but you skipped that relapsing remitting, remitting stage. You, went, you were straight at uh, relapsing progressive. And so those are the four different types. And, of course, they're not quite that clear cut. There's more to it. But that's kind of the just a give it a ballpark kind of thing. Those are also, you know, every single case of MS is different, too. I want to make that clear. I'm an identical twin. My twin's case is not the same as, as mine. My mother's is not the same as ours. No two cases are alike. MS is called a snowflake disease because no two snowflakes are the same, just as no two cases of MS are the same. That's why it's very hard to treat, because none of us are the same. We're all different. It's also invisible. Uh, that's another thing. It's a blessing and it's a curse, because some people, unfortunately, think that some of us take our, our issues because they can't see them. It's not that way. What we deal with, 90% of the time, we feel it. You can't see it. So... It makes it harder for us because a lot of people sometimes will think that, well, she's faking it because we may limp one day and the next day we may walk fine. We may be able to see one day and we may not be able to see the next day. And some people have a hard time grasping the fact that it's the disease doing this to us. And they, they may think that, well, just she was fine yesterday, so why is she, why is she not fine today? So, but it's because this is an invisible disease. Just because, you know, somebody's cousin with MS does just fine does not mean that, you know, this other person is going to be just fine with MS. Everyone is different with MS. So those, there's a lot more symptoms to it, a lot more, but that's just kind of the basic idea of MS. There's 
a lot more symptoms. There's over 90 different symptoms of MS. There's a lot of different... A lot, another thing about MS is that um, we get depression very bad. Um, we isolate ourselves a lot of the time because we have a hard time telling people our symptoms over and over again. And sometimes people have a, a hard time understanding what we're dealing with. And so they stop inviting us places, and it hurts our feelings. So my thing to anyone that may be listening is that if you know anyone with chronic illness, whether it's MS or anything else, just keep inviting them. Even if they say no every time that you ask them, you may ask them 10 times, but they may say yes on that 10th time. Even though they said no on the 9, nine out of 10 times, you're still letting them know that you care by asking, and they need that. I know this because I'm, I'm in that situation. We don't say no because we don't want to go. We say no because we can't go. But by you asking us to go, you're letting us know that you still care about us. And as a person with a chronic illness, as a person with a disease, we need that. We need to know that we're not forgotten about. So that's basically the gist about MS. Okay, Heather. Hey, listen, you did a great job there, and uh, so you I messed up on the end there. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say that you know you're a brave woman, and that a, there's a lot of courage there for you to speak out about it. Most people couldn't do that. They keep oh, thank it you. I probably, I messed up on the end. I'm sorry about That's that. That's okay. <laughs> we can we can uh, we can take care of that. But a lot a lot of people have no idea what happens to a person with MS, and uh, I know you've been putting a lot of videos out and we're hoping that it reaches as many people as they as they can because they need to know this because they just don't have any idea well thank you i, I hope the same thing that's that's my goal in this is to get through to the, to the people that don't know what it is because it, it gets confused when when i tell people that i have ms you know they confuse it with other diseases and it frustrates me because that's i want people to know what this is just like they know what cancer is you know so right. my goal is to create awareness because when you create awareness that's the first step towards getting a cure is creating awareness so okay. that's my goal okay we're going to put some addresses <laughs> and things on our show notes to uh let you know where you can go to find out more about ms and we hope you enjoyed the show today this is james with heather from toledo ohio and we appreciate you coming on the air. Now, Thank you so do, much. Do you have any addresses, uh, websites, or anything that, that I can jot down for show notes to where they can go that out? You can send them to me. On I know you're on that one page. Yeah, there. I have a I have that Facebook page, and I also have a YouTube channel. Okay, if you could send me the, those two addresses, on, then I'll just copy them and paste them into the show notes and stuff uh, where people can find out more about it and listen to some more of your videos. Okay, cool. Definitely, right. I'll do that. Thank you. I appreciate you doing this, and I'm so sorry it took me so long to get back to you. It's been, I've well, been going through it so much over here. It's been crazy. I understood it because I talk, I talk with Greg a lot, you know, and and he tells me the same story. You know, I mean, it's it's not uh, that you was trying to put it off. It's first thing I thought when you said you had a migraine. Um, I said, well, I think that's going to put her out a couple of days, and. So then I got a hold of Greg. Yeah, I finally got my I finally got my pain medicine today. So that that definitely made it a lot better. When I finally got my pain medicine, and so that's why I was like, okay, let me get a hold of him. So that this way, like, I don't. And I had it written right here on my on my nightstand um, to get a hold of you. So I was like, let me send him a message. So that this way, I don't forget about it. And I wrote that right here on my nightstand last night so that I wouldn't forget about it today. That that was that was well done, and uh, a lot of people. Well, thank you. I, I was hoping I wasn't gonna. I was trying not to ramble too much, and I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, I don't know really how to do this, but I was like, oh, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it, it it was nice. So, and that's gonna make Greg happy too, and I know a lot of other people out there that it's, it's gonna make them happy that the word's getting out because a lot of people can't sit there and talk to you like that. They can't, they can't, uh, they can't deal with it. And you can you can sit there and, and talk about. It. I know you kind of choked up a little bit there, but uh, I mean, no pe- people know the feelings. Right, but now. that's okay though. I like yeah, right. And I don't mind choking up sometimes because you know what? It, it, it's reality. It's yeah. true. It's you know, like some people are afraid to do that in front of people, but I'm not. You know, I don't mind doing that sometimes because it, it's the true feelings. You know, so right. yeah. I don't mind it. All right, appreciate it. And, All right. And, 
have the rest of a good day and the rest of the week there. We'll be having you in our prayers. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you doing this. And I appreciate you doing this. And, and, you know, that was very nice of you. And, you know, I I really appreciate it. I can't thank you enough. Well, thank Greg because he helped me uh, get a hold of you on that. He's the one that mentioned it the first time about he knew someone that that wanted to do a show. So I said, okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'll let you go. Okay, cool, and then I'll send you the, um, when we get off here, I'll go ahead and send you those links um, to, to my pages once we get off here. Okay, thanks a lot. Good, you have a good night. You too, bye. Thanks, bye-bye.